enjoy yoga, please stop. You're promoting white supremacy. Srina Gandhi, a professor of religious studies at Michigan State, argued in a recent piece that, quote, the explosion of yoga studios, yoga video, apps, yoga pants, and other yoga swag over the past two decades is evidence, you guessed it, of systemic racism built on, quote, the labor of black people and people of the global south. Kathy Rue is the founding publisher of Catalina Magazine. More than that, she is our guide to the changing landscape of 2018 and the deepest recesses of the lunatic left. And we're glad to see you as always, Kathy. So yoga is racist. How is that? Well, according to this article, many white people who do yoga, and it's mostly white people who do yoga, so a uh, few of them understand the culture, the history, and the religion behind yoga, and they're simply enjoying it for the physical aspects of it. So they're not truly understanding yoga and what it goes back to, and um, they need to if they want to appreciate it, and if not, they're simply giving into this uh, viewpoint of white supremacy, according to this Professor. Huh. So if, if yoga is racist, is hot yoga more racist or less? <laughs> all Western yoga is racist, according to this author, according to this professor. All Western yoga. So yoga that is practiced in India has nothing to do with the yoga that's practiced in uh, the Western world. Huh. So, what about yeah. Pilates? Are those safe? Pilates was not discussed in the article. It's Western yoga as a whole. It's being practiced by white people, white women, upper class, middle class people, Ooh. not minorities, Ooh. not Latinos, not immigrants. Ooh. Yeah, so this is, this is a white um, sport, a white well, that's, activity. Well, that right there is suspect, okay? So, you know, call the police. What about Taekwondo? I mean, by these standards, that might be banned, right? Well, by this author's standards, perhaps, but she really has a problem with the yoga in industrial, I think it was, uh, yoga industrialization, industrial complex. That's what she called it, the yoga industrial complex. So, that, so, if so it's maybe wrong, Taekwondo falls under that. If it's wrong for people in the West to practice yoga, is it wrong for people in the rest of the world to use the Internet, which was created here? Part of our cultural legacy? Well, I think we understand the culture of the internet, and it doesn't go back to the British colonizing India and what the Indians had to do to uh, introduce them to yoga and show them that their culture was actually intelligent, and that was part of the yoga movement, and that's how it came to the United States in the 19th and 20th centuries. So, okay. yeah, so the internet would not. Um, fall the into internet this. would not. No, what no. about like democracy? I mean, that was invented by the Greeks in the West, right, the right. basis of Western civilization. No, then again, no, no, no. Yoga was a way for the Indians to show their colonizers that they were intelligent and that they had this wonderful... <laughs> what do you read your history? It's this, totally this wrong. Is what this, this Yoga is what this predates the British saying. by quite a bit. Okay, but so I, I just wonder, I was interested, how many people who are into yoga in the United States do you think voted for Donald Trump? Oh, well, the author didn't touch upon that, but... But what's your guess? I mean, as someone who's very familiar with non-Trump voters, would you say maybe 1% of people who practice yoga voted Trump, or is that too high? Uh, it, according to the, the author, uh, many middle and upper class white women practice yoga. So those people who fit into that category uh, and are Trump supporters voted for Trump. <laughs> so are, do, are you struck by the fact that that series of descriptors, upper middle class, white, like that's kind of the whole argument on the left now. So anything that has those words attached is just bad just because, and anything that doesn't is superior to that. Uh, yeah, according to this article, those are the people who practice yoga and uh, do not understand immigrants and minorities and what they're going through and perhaps have more privilege and are able to experience yoga and other things that other groups cannot experience. So last question, if in a multicultural society, which we live in, and, right. and I'm, I'm for the basic principle, which is there are cool things about other cultures and you should enjoy them. Mm -hmm. When did the rules change? So we live in a multicultural society, but you're not allowed to enjoy cool things from other cultures, or if you do, you have to feel guilty about it. Uh, How does that work? Well, the author said, by no means, don't stop doing yoga, but if you do it, understand that you're only understanding an eighth of it, that there's so much more to yoga. So understand oh. what people went through to introduce this to you from their culture to your culture. So have an appreciation. Don't just take advantage of it and buy the yoga gear and take advantage of this wonderful tradition that was brought to you by another culture. 
Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I haven't tested it, but I suspect downward dog is harder to enjoy if you're hating yourself while you do it, wouldn't you think? I don't think anyone would hate themselves. They would just know more <laughs> That's about the point, it. Of course. They should know more about downward <laughs> more dog. More self loathing. Kathy, it's great to see you as always. You really are our Sherpa, and we appreciate it. Sorry, Sherpa, different culture. No offense intended.